In this video, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know from the time you receive your ultimate control in the mail until you press play at your first show. Now here's the package. Inside when you open it up, you're going to find that you have the ultimate control MP3 player. It'll be in bubble wrap. And then you also have the remote on the other side here. Further into the package, you're going to find the adapter that is the wall plug. And that is where you put the USB end when you're plugging it into a US um, wall plug, 110 volts. And um, here is the cord. This is a USB to micro USB cord, so that goes into the top of the ultimate control and this end does and then this end will go into your computer or like I said into the end of the wall plug. You also have a set of headsets that we threw in there for you just so that you can preview your music when you don't have it hooked up to an amplifier and the instruction booklet as well. Now the instruction booklet we try to cover everything that you'll need to know but are also always available. Uh, you can call uh, Happy Amp at 1-800-504-4800 and that phone number and my email address is in the back of the instruction manual as well. Okay, first let's cover the remote. Here is the remote control for the ultimate control and you'll see that there is a button here on the side and then there are five buttons on the front. Now, this button up here is next track. This is previous track or if you happen to be in the middle of a track this will go back to the beginning of that track first and then another press will take you to the previous track volume up is over here volume down is over here this is play or pause depending on if you're already playing or if you're already paused and over here is your fade out button on the side of the remote now when you first get your remote I want you to check each button you're going to press each button and look for that green light to flash. It's very faint. I'm turning it so you can see it on the video. It's supposed to be faint. It's not supposed to be something that the audience can see when you press a button. So it's just a very faint little flash. But if I turn it and angle it just right, you can see it flash when I press each button. That means that the remote is transmitting a signal. So you can check each button and make sure that they work. The fade out button, you're actually going to press the back and the front of the fade out button. There are two buttons underneath there, so they're the, the front and the back. And when you press any one of those buttons, you should see that little green light flash. You should get about 500 button presses out of the remote before you need to change the battery, and I'll cover how to change the battery next. Okay, in order to change the battery on the remote, you're going to want to buy replacement batteries that are 2032. Um, they're the large cell, uh, basically like the watch batteries. These say DL2032, but they're a 3 volt flat battery. And those are the batteries that you're going to want to purchase to, to replace the battery. And there are three screws on the back of the remote. And all you have to do is remove all three screws. Once you remove all three screws, you can pull up on the back uh, anywhere other than the corner that doesn't have a screw and take the back off. Now there's the battery right there. And the clasp that's holding it in is two sides. And there's a plastic side, which is over here, and there is a metal side, which is over here. The easiest thing to do is to pull back on the metal piece that's holding the battery in and that will let the battery slide out like that okay to put it back in you can put it back under the new one you can put it back under 
the brass side first, the metal side. Push down with your thumb and it will click right into place. Okay, And then you can just, if you hold in the battery, just check and make sure that that light is flashing before you put the back back on. Now also, while we're here doing the battery, let me show you the cover. These covers are replaceable. All right. The entire battery or the entire remote cover is rubber and very durable. So those ends can be pulled on pretty hard and wrapped around a belt. Okay. And uh, this whole rubber casing can be replaced. So if you do wear through one or break a strap or something, just give us a call and we can send you a replacement uh, for that. But easy enough just to to line it back up again if you do take it off you've got the green light that flashes over here and on the cover is a hole so that would be the appropriate side to put back in there so the green light flashes through the hole that way you know which way is the right way to put it back together so put the rubber casing all the way over the other clue is of course the fade out button on the side goes right by the buttons that are inside the remote as well. So put the casing back on like that. Take the back and you want to put that corner in first that doesn't have a screw. And then the other three sides down and you just need to put the three screws back in. I'll show you a little ultimate control remote hack that you can do and right now Jeff Kaler is looking going, is that the back of my business card? Yes Jeff, it is. You need to find a real nice thick good quality business card uh, such as the one that Jeff Kaler gave me. So if you don't have TKO 2.0, give him a call if that's in focus. Alright, anyway, so what you want to do is take and uh, somewhere on the business card where there's no important information that you may need later, cut off a little piece of a nice thick business card, even like a plastic card that's a laminated card. And you can pull up on the edge of the remote here. Um, you can take the back off and pull it up there. So basically what we're doing is some people like the feel of the side button here and how it's, it's, it takes a little bit of pressure to press it so that you don't accidentally press it. Other people like the fade out button and play button to be um, much easier to press. So if you pull that up and you slide that piece in there underneath the remote cover and you might have to play with it and cut it a couple of times to get it just right, you can make that button a lot more sensitive and I actually prefer it this way myself. And then you can put the back back on and you screw it back in. Once you do that, now that fade out button is a lot easier to press. Let me see if I get the right angle so you can see the light. It's a lot easier to press. And um, so when you reach down to your pocket during your show and you just give the remote a quick squeeze, you can squeeze and, and hit that, rem that button a lot quicker. All right, so there's a nice little hack for you. All right, the next thing to do is to check out the MP3 player that is your ultimate control. So now we want to just check it and make sure that everything is working properly. When you turn it on, there is an on-off button on the side here. And you push that up so that it turns on. And you will get the ultimate control screen. And then it goes right to the music menu. Now when you um, go through the menus you can go down here right and left will control you through the menus back and forth so you can go to the playlist and then to set up about and then it'll circle back around there's only four different options try to keep it simple for you if i press on the center button on music it's going to tell me that there it is an empty disk because I don't have any music in there yet. So we will get to that. Playlist is going to tell me the same thing right now. Empty disk. All right. If I go to setup, there's a couple of things you should do right when you get your ultimate control. If you want it to be able to stay on and not let the screen time out, you have to go into setup. And the first option says backlight. 
So you're going to click on Backlight, and you're going to go to Always On. It's the top option. Um, you're going to go down to you're going to go down to the next option, which says Power Off, and you're going to go to Off Timer and you're going to go to off so you turn the off timer off and you're good to go now it'll stay lit for you I can hit the M button down here to take me back out to the main menu and um, if you go over to the about screen you can see what version it is and also it says register so we click on register and it tells you to go to happyamp.com front slash PAC as in personal audio control dot html so that's happyamp.com front slash pac dot html and there are questions and answers there so that'll help you out a lot as well so we're going to go back out to the main screen now let's plug it in and let me show you what happens when you plug it in either to the wall or to your computer now if you're um, not in the u.s. you're not going to be able to use this plug you either need to get a converter that converts your 220 power or 240 to 110 um, or it might say uh, 240 to 120, or it might say 220 to 110. Either way is fine, but you're not going to be able to use this. What you'll want to do overseas, anywhere that's other than 110, is just simply plug this directly into your computer. Don't plug it into a USB hub. You want to plug that directly into your computer, and you will get um, be able to charge your ultimate control that way. So right now I'm going to plug that into the wall. And when I plug this into the ultimate control, we get this screen that pops up. All right, That is totally normal. That just means that it is connected and that it is charging. If you would like to see how the battery is charging, all you have to do is press the M button over here and hold it in a couple of seconds of holding it in, and it will switch back to the main screen. Now, when you're back on the main screen, you can see in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, it's hard to get it to focus because of the reflection. Um, the upper corner right up here, sorry it's out of focus, is the battery charging icon. It's moving right now, which means that it is charging. When it stops moving like that, it'll stay lit then you know that the battery is fully charged. If you want to go back to the other screen, there's really no need to. It's still charging. All you have to do is press the fade out button down here in the corner and it is going to take you back to that screen. Now, you can check the remote and the ultimate control together to make sure that they are working together properly. I'm going to take it back to the main menu screen. And by the way, if you hold in the M and it doesn't switch after a few seconds, let go of the M and at that point it should switch for you. And uh, here's the remote. So now, if I press a button on the remote, you'll see it's it's some of the menus that will actually go into the menu. Um, but you'll see the red button is flashing. Uh, the red light is flashing on the bottom corner of the ultimate control. That means that they are, it is receiving the signal. Now, yours may be set to accept all remotes. You need to change that. So you're going to go to the setup menu and you're going to go down to remote control settings and it says add number one remote control. So we're pressing the center button again to add remote number one and then I press any button on the ultimate control. It says press any key of remote. So I press a key and it says that the setting was successful. So now your ultimate control will only receive a signal from this remote and that's it. If you have a second remote you can go down to add remote number two and then do the same thing. Click on the button there. Um, you don't want to leave it on accept all remotes because if you end up in a restaurant somewhere and there's another magician or another entertainer in another room using an ultimate control as well, um, the frequency range on these, I'm, it, you're going to be interfering with each other because they have such a great range. So we don't want to see that happen. So make sure that you do add your remote control. Okay, so I just loaded some music into the Ultimate Control. We have our other video that teaches you how to do that. And um, now I'm going to make a playlist for you. Hopefully it's 
relatively in focus here. Now I'm on the music screen. I'm going to go over to the playlist screen, hit the center button. It says please wait and then it says add playlist yes and so I'm going to hit the center button again to add the playlist and then it says do I want to add a track immediately because there aren't any tracks in the playlist so I say yes and um, I am going to add in uh, track number four here and then I just started it uh, playing there so we know it's there by pressing it again I'm gonna go back over here is the playlist it says USRPL001 user playlist one and the other video shows how to change that name so that you can customize the names of your playlist and uh, I'm gonna go into the playlist I'm gonna hit the E button on the side over here uh, go to add track which is the top option and then choose another track to drop in there Add the track, yes. And then I'm going to go over to the E again, add another track, add the track, yes. Let's do one more, add another track, add that track, yes. So now I have four songs in this playlist. And um, if I need to change the order of the songs, I can go down, highlight the second song, for example, here. And I am going to click on the E button for edit. And I'm going to say track sequence, which is the second option. And I'm going to hit the center button to choose track sequence. And I'm going to go to uh, move down. And it'll move that song down one. So now that song is the third position. Now if I want to move the bottom track all the way to the top, I can go to the bottom track and I can hit the E button. And then I'm going to go to track sequence. And I'm going to say move first and it moved that song all the way up to the first position. There's a lot of different options and things that you can do with those tracks to customize them. Uh, for example, if I start playing this track number one in my playlist, and you'll see that track number one is on a red screen with a white number. Go down, track number two is on an orange screen. Track number three is on a yellow screen. And yeah, the, the white three is hard to see on the yellow screen, but from a distance, you're not gonna be able to see the number anyway. You're gonna see a color. So even at 40 or 50 feet away, when you look over at your ultimate control and you see yellow, you know you're on track three. Track number four is green, so it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And then it starts over again, only when it starts over again um, with track number seven, it's going to be the opposite of track number one. So it's actually going to have a red one on a white background. So still from a distance, you'll be able to see um, that it's a red number on a white background and you'll know that you've started the colors over and you're on track seven, so on and so forth. Now, while I'm playing this track, I can hit the E button and if I just hit it a single touch, it's going to be adjusting the main volume. Okay. Now, while I'm on that track, if I hit and hold down the E button, it's going to go into my options. Track volume is the first option. So if I choose track volume, it's at 90%. That's the default setting for all the tracks. This allows you to change the volume of that track, just that track in just this playlist. Now, I didn't do anything for a little while, so it popped back out of there. So let's go back to track volume, and I'm going to change that track volume down to 70%. Now, I won't, if I'm playing it now, I won't hear it until I confirm that change. Now I'll hear the change, and then um, if I'm not happy with that change, so it's, oh, it went a little too quiet for me, I can go up to 75%, say, yeah, it's still a little too quiet, 80%, perfect, that's where I want it. Um, so you can change the track volume, that way you can have a song playing low in the background if you want to talk over it uh, during a routine in your show, um, or if you want to just uh, match the volume of all the tracks when you bring them in from different sources. Uh, sometimes they are different volumes on any MP3 player, so we found a way to fix that. Now, uh, if I press and hold down E, I'm going to go back to that uh, edit menu, and I have play mode. So I can change the play mode. Right now, it's set to cue and pause. That means that when the song finishes, it's going to cue up the next song and pause and wait for my command. If I change that to cue and play, that means that when this song ends, 
it is going to simply start playing the next song. So that might be a good option for you in your pre-show music so that you can let one track play into the next track into the next track like any MP3 player does. But then when your show is going on, you want to have it set to those songs set to um, play or uh, cue and pause so that it won't just start playing your next track when you advance to the next track or when you fade it out or even if the track just runs out um, because it uses up the whole track. So the only other option in, your, in the edit menu while a track is playing in a playlist is the EQ mode. That just makes slight adjustments so that you can hear a little bit of a difference. Different theaters or different sound systems are going to sound a little bit different so you can make adjustments in there. Now we can go back out to the menu. You can add unlimited number of playlists and uh, as many songs as you want in each. You can not delete a song off of your music list in the ultimate control for a very good reason. We don't want you to accidentally delete a song off of your ultimate control when you may be needing it at a show. The only way to delete a song completely off of the ultimate control is when it's hooked to the computer. Um, you can, however, delete songs out of playlists. Now they're still on the ultimate control. If I go to this um, second track here and go to delete track it just takes it out of this playlist I can simply add it back in by going add track and clicking on it and clicking on it again there for add track and it puts it right back into my playlist uh, so there are a lot of options just a lot of things that we've thought of to make sure that um, it runs smoothly for you uh, so that's setting up a playlist now when you go to your show and you're ready to start your playlist you're gonna go into your playlist the one that you want to use for that show. And you probably want to put it on track number one unless you have a last minute change or something. You're going to connect it to your amp, do all your sound checks, and um, then you are ready to go if it's sitting on the track that you are going to play first. Right now I have it on the first track is highlighted and I have it's the remote right here, but I, ha I keep the remote inside my pocket. So it'll sit there and it'll wait for me uh, for a couple of hours if need be until I'm ready to start it. And when I'm ready to start my show, all I have to do is inside my pocket, press this button right here in the center. That's the play button. And it starts to play track number one. And then when I'm finished with track number one, I can in my pocket fade out. And it's going to fade out track number one. And it's going to start playing track number two. The reason starting to play track number two and not waiting for me is because we had that track set to cue and play. So now it is eight, nine, ten seconds into track number two. Um, but this track is set to cue and pause. So when I hit the fade out button, it's going to go to track number three and it is going to sit there and wait for me on that yellow screen. Uh, until I'm ready. As soon as I'm ready to play track number three in my show, I can press the, either the fade out button or the start stop button. So press the fade out button and you saw the red light flash down here telling me that it did receive the signal and it started to play that track. Uh, if I want to skip to track number four, I can go to the next track button and it's going to go to track number four. Now it's going to start playing track number four because track number three was playing when I did it. So it'll stick in the same mode there. Now if I go back to track number three, and, and I have track number three paused at some point, and I go down to track number four, it's going to stay paused and wait for my command as long as it takes until I'm ready, and I can press play. When you run to the end of a playlist, you can hit the next track button. It's going to go back to the beginning of that playlist. It'll loop back to the beginning again. So there you go. You should be ready to use and enjoy your ultimate control and good health. A couple of important notes for you. I'm just doing a screen capture. So um, here is my ultimate control. It's USB disk F when I connected it. Now what I can do, this will work on um, Windows 7 if I uh, or Windows XP. If I right click and I go down to rename I can change that to ultimate now when I go and connect it or disconnect it from the computer whenever it comes up it'll come up as ultimate makes it a little bit easier to find also 
This is uh, a nice little hack that was discovered by my good friend Mark Virgo, uh, magician here in the Orlando area. You can, when you've created a playlist, and so I have user playlist one here, I didn't bother changing the name of it yet, and uh, I can actually right click on it and I copy and then in that same folder just paste and it is going to give me user playlist copy and let's say I paste it again and it's going to give you copy number two now I can change the names of all of those in Windows 7 you can simply click on it and change the name you'll see that the extension did not highlight so I can change that to kids show um, in Windows XP you must right click on it and go down to rename otherwise it'll delete the extension and it will not work so then I can do um, kids copy All right, and this one down here rename kids copy to now the reason that that is helpful is if you are using a, a playlist that you want to keep the same for all your shows but you go to a show and you want to take one song out or you want to change the order around you can actually do that in one of the copies so the kids show playlist always stays the same these will appear on the um, ultimate control for you so you can those are usable playlists in the ultimate control now and um, you can change one without affecting how your regular one is set up so there's a useful hack for you one last note is to make sure you do copy over uh, files in the format of mp3 or wma when you copy over your songs so those are the only formats that are going to play yes we could have made the ultimate control to accept 10 or 12 different formats but since we wanted to keep it simple and keep all of the software on the ultimate control and only on the ultimate control so that we didn't have to create software for your computer and have to then give you updates every time they changed windows or macintosh operating systems um, or any operating system you might be using we uh, we had to keep it simple so everything is on the ultimate control itself uh, which makes your life easier too because then there's less uh, possible glitches as other factors are changed and um, anyway to keep it simple we used only two file formats and there are a ton of programs on the internet that you can find that will change the file formats even iTunes will do it will change the file formats for you to mp3 you can look those up or you can look up um, on YouTube videos on how to do that and it's very easy so um, there was really no need for us to make it so that uh, you could do it in the ultimate control it could just potentially slow things down for you and uh, cause issues so we kept it simple um, to make everyone happy and um, the last thing is when you can press the M on your ultimate control to, to disconnect it from the computer you can also go over here to where I have it changed to ultimate right click on it and I can go to eject that's gonna do the same thing that's gonna disconnect it from my computer uh, make sure that you have the ultimate control in the on position when you do loading of music so that you don't end up with any issues and uh, we're all set enjoy one last note for you on this video this is the ultimate control I have it connected to my computer so I have it open and I'm going to take the playlist folder that has my playlists in it and all the music on the ultimate control and I'm going to just copy all of that so copy and I've made a file on my computer called music backup and I am going to paste that in there now if I do that if I switch ultimate controls I can just grab all of this and drop it right on the uh, ultimate control and all my playlists will be there and all my songs will be there um, so that's a good idea to uh, keep a backup for you on your computer with everything that you need. If you ever need to reinstall it on your ultimate control, you'll have the backup on the computer. Enjoy!